complexity. We see that in everything we do. Look no further than the last time that you filed your income taxes, or you had to assemble furniture that you purchased from Ikea. The reality is in today's world, sometimes it's simply impossible to get things done without help. At least in the case of taxes, you can go to H&R Block, or you can go and hire your local CPA, and they can help you get through the process. In the case of Ikea, in my own personal experience, I'd say I don't have any help for that. Those instructions are impossible to understand, and I never seem to be able to assemble the furniture the right way, ever. With that said, in the tax space, the tools that we use to do our taxes continue to improve year after year. This year, I filed my taxes online, and I can tell you that the experience was so much better than it had been in the past. Even though I had to file more complex forms than I had needed to do in past years, and it was very simple for me to go step by step. And if I needed help, then I could go and use online help in order to get myself unstuck. This complexity and the opportunities for simplicity are also evident in the data and analytics space. Just like going and hiring a CPA or using one of those tools online, then we need to make sure that we organize in the data and analytics space in such a way that we have the right people, the right process, and the right tools to get the job done. This is the value in Jupiter, and we, we find the intersection in data science and data engineering. Throughout my career, I've been primarily focused on data in some form or fashion. And more recently, at Capital One, I've started managing our data engineering teams that focus on building tools to help our users get from insight to action more quickly. Throughout my career, I've encountered increasing complexity. And the reality is the problems that we face today are simply more challenging than they used to be in the past. And like this cartoon, it seems more and more difficult to actually explain what you're doing in the data engineering space, and vice versa, when others explain things to me like principal component analysis or neural networks. Sometimes my eyes glaze over, and I just simply don't understand what they're talking about. These are difficult areas to understand, and you need to have the right talent stacked against it. So today, I'd really like to talk about three things. The first thing is complexity equals ever greater challenges. The second is that data scientists plus data engineers and other folks in the data professions equals success. And finally, Jupiter can be at the center of it all. In the modern world, the challenges that we face continue to grow in breadth and scope. In turn, we have to have larger and larger organizations organized around those problems in order to get the job done. It used to be that in the past, if we look at the progress of scientific progress over history, then individuals were the primary drivers of scientific advancement, whether you talk about da Vinci, Newton, or Galileo. Then over time, as problems became more and more complex, then team of researchers had to be aligned against these problems, like the team that discovered DNA. And then as we got into the 20th century, the ambitions that we had as a society were so significant that we had to stack enormous organizations against these, and the tens of thousands of people. In the case of the Manhattan Project, an estimated 130,000 people worked on the Manhattan Project in order to produce the AVA. In the case of sending a man to the moon, it took over a decade and 400,000 people to actually get that job done. The reality is that in both cases, there was a vast organization of different disciplines involved. It included engineers, scientists, mathematicians, project managers, manufacturers, and a variety of other folks to get the job done. In my own experience, then it's, when I started with Circuit City, the first thing that we did is we worked on uh, creating our annual marketing plan. And really, this was about ensuring that we had the right dry periods in place based on what had happened in the past, like back to school and Christmas and so on. But in order to do this effort, there were about 40 to 50 people involved in the project from a variety of different roles, ad buyers, marketing specialists, data analysts, business analysts, statisticians, and project managers. Without that diverse set of roles, we simply would not have been able to get the job done. In addition to the breadth and scope of these problems, there's also simply the speed that these problems continue to progress. If you look back over the last couple decades, you can see the landscape is dotted with things such as, with companies such as Blockbuster, MySpace.com, and Radio Shack. These are organizations that simply missed the opportunity to evolve, or they simply could not change fast enough to keep up with the pace of change. The folks that are in this room are the best position in their organizations to highlight the challenges that decision makers face and to, pro to provide a, a light on what those headwinds actually look like. 
The important thing, though, is that we have to make sure that we have the right people, process, and tools in place in order to get this job done, and do it at the pace of change that's required. With that said, you really need to make sure that you have the right foundation underneath. So I'm going to start with people and talk about what you need there. Now, in a lot of cases, it may be simply enough to have a data scientist. You know, if you're a citizen data scientist or you're just doing a one-off type thing, it may be enough to just have a data scientist on the team. But the reality is that some of the operational complexity around putting these things in place at scale really require a data engineer. And, this, and even though data scientists may be capable of doing things that, are, that a data engineer would do, the fact of the matter is that the data engineers are really a specialization of software engineering. And the focus is really on distributed systems and ensuring that we can move data as quickly as possible, store data in such a way that it can be leveraged again and again, and then ensuring that models that are produced are operate, can be done in an operational, impactful, and resilient way. In short, data scientists focus on delivering insights that can drive business strategy in the real world, and data engineers should focus on making it easy to go from insight to action in the real world. So I'm very quickly going to take a step back and talk about a mental model here. I really love Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I think it can be applied to a lot of different situations. And really, the, the basics about it is that um, you have to have one layer of the pyramid taken care of before you can really move on to the next. So for example, you have to first address physiological needs first, like food and sleep. Then you can move on and worry about safety. And then from there, you can move on and worry about things like love and belonging. But if you don't have your foundation in place, you simply cannot move into the next layer. So last year, Monica Rogatti published a wonderful Medium post on the data science hierarchy of needs that follows a similar approach. And in this case, there's really five steps. The first is that you need to collect the data. Second, move and store, then explore and transform, then aggregate and label, and finally learn and optimize and create some type of output that can actually be used. And the roles that I just mentioned earlier are involved throughout this process. A data engineer really needs to be there to ensure the right instrumentation is in place, the right framework is in place to move the data quickly and store it efficiently. Together, data scientists and data engineers can then work together to ensure that the data is refined from the raw material into something that can be used. And finally, data scientists can also then take that data and then build the data models that are required. But with that, you also need to ensure that you have a data engineer involved so that they can productionize that model in such a way that it can be operational and impactful in large organizations when you're dealing with complex problems as well. So together, they really build the foundation, and then you see that this foundation is in place as well. So from a different perspective, problems tend to be solved via a standard pattern, with the steps being ideation, explore, analyze, synthesize, in other words, taking the results and putting something together that can be shared out, taking action on those results, and then deploying something out there in the real world that can be operational and impactful to your organization. The problem is, is that the duties are too often segregated between the different portions of the data organization, whether you talk about data scientists, data engineering, or data management, or any other of the data professionals that are out there. And the key thing is that data scientists and data engineers, as well as these other data professionals, work together throughout this process in order to really get the job done. With that said, it's also important to ensure that you have the right tools in place so that you can collaborate together as a team and as an organization in order to really face these challenges down. Data engineers should not only source data, but they should also build the tools that enable others to, to do their work as effectively as possible, whether it be a data scientist or it be somebody that's less technical but still needs to be involved in the iteration of an analysis or data modeling work. Jupyter can be the fulcrum on which this entire process can be managed. The use of extensions and magics have always been there in the Jupyter universe and have always worked really well. But the great thing is, with Jupyter Lab, these extensions can become even richer. And Jupyter Lab can serve as a meta container that can manage this entire process, except for perhaps the last process. But you can still add in some data integrations as well. So let me kind of walk through what types of things that you may be able to do across this process within Jupyter to help folks within your organization do things more easily. First of all, an, order, an ideate. You could organize your ideas in Jupyter. For example, something like a pocket or a heap, where you can store everything that you've researched and looked into so the team can collaborate together on those ideas. You could also integrate with your task management system, such as Jira, so that the team knows what they're doing next and can continue to collaborate together, even if they're not right there together at one location. 
Additionally, in Explorer, you could integrate a data source browser, similar to what you might see in a typical SQL editor, um, into Jupyter itself and connect it with your metadata catalog. That thus ensuring that people understand what data is available and also enabling them to understand that data more, uh, more quickly. In Analyze, you could build data source connections that are standard across your data ecosystem. Instead of writing a bunch of boilerplate code every time you need to connect to a new data source, why not make it a one-liner or even simpler than that and just make it a magic cell? And that way, it's incredibly easier for folks in your organization to actually connect with the data that they need to use on a regular basis. In addition, you can build common tooling, like validation libraries, for example, that ensure that the team does things in a standard way across the entire analytic lifecycle. In Synthesize, you could use things like Rise or Lightning and Plotly to ensure that your decision makers and the rest of the team has a way to collaborate on the final results. And really, this may be something that becomes an iteration as you move to action. Something like Airbnb's Knowledge Repo is an excellent example of a way that you can collaborate with Jupyter Notebooks. And then people that are not actually directly working on the notebooks can then collaborate, write comments, and then uh, you can have more of an open community around the analysis that's being conducted. And finally, deploy. You can integrate with things like um, NB Dime, for example, that allows you to do diffs on GitHub so that you can merge your, your notebooks into the GitHub, or use something like Jenkins and Travis CI as a continuous, and, and continuous integration and delivery pipeline. I think this last step is absolutely critical to any process that you have once the problem gets to a complex enough stage. The reality is, is that you need to be able to move things that you've produced into production quickly. And as you refine your analyses and you build on the model, you need to ensure that you can move things into production as quickly as possible so that they can be as impactful in your organization as quickly as possible. So any time that my team starts a new project, this is the first thing that we do because we need to make sure that as the organization asks us to change, we can change as quickly as we need to. With that, I'd like to leave you with three conclusions. The first is that complex problems cannot be solved by data scientists, data engineers, or any data, other data professionals alone. We need to work together as cross-functional teams in today's world with the complex problems we face. And by doing that, we will be able to solve these problems much more effectively than we otherwise would be able to. Second, data scientists and data engineers together ensure that you have that success because then you have the right skills in place in order to execute on this entire process. And finally, Jupyter can be a hub for well-managed agile analytics. And I would emphasize that. The fact is, is that by ensure, embedding what you're doing within the tools themselves, you can ensure that your organization and the team that you're working on is doing things in a standard way, thus ensuring you're well-governed, and also allowing you to be agile in the way that you do your, agile, uh, your analytics. So with that said, I would encourage you to go back to your organizations and really think about how can you organize around these problems in the most effective way possible. If you're an individual, seek out community with the Jupyter Open Source Project, or look for other opportunities in the data science community to provide your skills, whether you're a data scientist, data engineer, traditional data analyst, or some other kind of data professional. With the intersection of data engineering and data science, and Jupiter as your Swiss army knife in the data and analytics world, any complex problem that you face can and will be solved. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.